So please welcome on stage Jakub uh, Jawionski. Okay, so this one won't going to be about technology. It also won't going to be about time management because I'm bad at both of these uh, ideas. Uh, I come from Platish Mash, but I, I also work for my own company, which is Juggler Games. Uh, and what I mainly do, uh, I'm an art director and I also direct game cinematics uh, for uh, uh, game dev. I started uh, after finishing Academy of Arts and uh, Film School in Łódź, which is a huge Polish city. And I quickly joined Platish Mash and I worked there for like 10 years. I started from concept art, from painting, from drawing stuff, from creating boardboards. And then I became a head of art department. And now my job is mainly talking and uh, walking with people. But then this thing happened, the thing I call too many projects. And the projects I, uh, I was working on, I directed this. These are cinematics like uh, Rise, Son of Rome. Uh, I did all the cinematics for Hitman uh, together with guys from Iron Interactive. Uh, I did Watch Dogs to Reveal trailer, the recent Warhammer Total War 2 trailer, and some stuff for Frostpunk. Uh, I did also art directing for a nice Polish game called Bound. I think the Bonsai is somewhere here. This is the game by Studio Plastic, very nice, exclusive on PS4. I recommend it for guys who like uh, to connect with uh, crazy art. And I did art directing for Godfire. But uh, how does it look? Uh, how does directing look in a CJ post production studio like Platish Mesh? So I have these two zones here, yesterday and to today's zone. The yesterday zone is when I was an artist, when I was actually doing stuff by myself. So uh, I was mainly drawing. Uh, my contact with client was um, not so huge. I wasn't writing screenplays. I wasn't doing so, not so many reviews. I was mainly doing stuff by myself or uh, leading just few artists. But now when I direct like, more than two cinematics or three cinematics per year, or <clears throat> for example, today I'm directing three uh, simultaneously, uh, I have to give up with art, which, is, uh, which wasn't the best idea for me. That's why I decided to uh, create something beside my uh, everyday work. But uh, <clears throat> the main core team uh, in Platish Mash looks like we have director, we have project lead who is responsible for all the technology, for all the uh, work of generalists, for the work of for managing all the artists, and the producer who is responsible for budget and for the timing. But uh, actually, in this team. There's no guy who's the most important one because this triangle is constantly rotating. And uh, we are communicating together in many different ways. Uh, I believe that the uh, main sickness of uh, production studios and, and game, game the studios today is communication. And uh, while working on a few projects simultaneously, I'm using like too many communicators, too many uh, programs to. Uh, copy images, paste some texts and stuff like this. But <clears throat> when you zoom out, we also have the client here, who's of course the most important guy, because the main difference between uh, creating game cinematics and creating games is that I have client who is usually a game developer. And uh, it starts usually like in, in two ways. The first one is uh, client has, a, has an idea. And he asked us to, to start in competition to write a director's treatment, to uh, write something about his idea, uh, to basically create a director's brief, which contains some ideas for art, some ideas for storytelling. Uh, <clears throat> this is the most common way. But the most preferable way for me is when we meet together, when we talk together, and when the client gives us like a general idea, general marketing idea, when he, we talk about his needs, and when uh, main storyline comes from the studio. And Platish is actually quite good in it. Game Dev Lab likes to work with us because we are quite creative. Uh, <clears throat> this is the stuff I was talking also on Digital Dragons, the secret ingredient of uh, game trailers. So this one is a typical chart of, mov uh, of normal mo movie, like uh, 125 minutes. Uh, I believe most of you know it. Uh, if you read something about screenwriting, uh, you will find, you, you will recognize all the ideas here. Uh, but this is how a uh, typical uh, game trailer looks. It's much shorter. It's, you cannot paste this one into this one because then you'll receive complete chaos. So <clears throat> we don't have uh, 
the most important part of the typical movie, which we call exposition. So I came with this idea that we have something called exposition by conflict. And we don't have too many story beats. We don't have a rising action and falling action idea, but we have the reveals. And this one is actually quite important, uh, not only for me as a director, not for the CGI artists, but it's mainly important for uh, guys in marketing in game dev. Because uh, we can reveal many things. Usually, we reveal characters. Uh, sometimes we, really, we reveal uh, foreshadowing game mechanics. But uh, for me, the, the best idea is to reveal a promise. And this promise should be designed by the client, which in this case is, of course, uh, game dev marketing. <clears throat> when the staff, when the story is designed, uh, we start to work. And we have like two biggest enemies at the beginning. One is, I call him content greed. And this is actually quite funny because uh, the biggest content greed is not the client. It's usually me because uh, I don't, I'm not watching the money. I'm not watching the budget. I'm, uh, I just want to make a nice movie. Uh, so <clears throat> this one is easy to solve. The producer has a stick and he's just beating me all the time. But let's talk about the time paradox. This one actually is quite interesting. Uh, and this is the, the main idea of time paradox is that we have this production line for, uh, for a typical game. And uh, game dev studios usually want uh, cinematic for uh, special events like, let's say, E3 reveal. Uh, and then we start the work. But when we start the work, we usually have no key assets uh, to create the movie. Sometimes uh, main characters are not, not designed yet. Sometimes uh, main scenography is not created. So basically, we need to start working uh, using key assets that are not yet uh, created. And this is our pipeline, uh, CGI pipeline. So uh, we have like this. Two areas. One is the safe one, uh, <clears throat> when we start, when we create all the creative stuff, when we wrote, uh, when we write screenplays, when we, when I do director's treatment, uh, when we do all the deals, uh, when we meet together and just talk, talk, talk. When we design the movie, also we create the storyboards, mood boards, concept art, the usual stuff. Uh, and this one is safe because we can change a lot here, and uh, CGI studio, uh, we work very fast, so. Cinematics are like three or four months to create. Of course, there are some super huge cinematics that take like half of the year, but uh, the work is quite fast. Uh, we are all the time on crunch and we are a bit like rats because we don't like to uh, run backwards because uh, lots of stuff can be destroyed. Of course, it happens all the time. Uh, for me, as a director, the most important part uh, for the storytelling is the previous part. Uh, that's why I call this uh, area placeholder, because uh, then we start to watch a movie which is looking very ugly, gray, without visual effects, without colors. Uh, the first renders are usually very ugly. They show nothing. And uh, Previs is like the uh, design that uh, content contains camera movement, editing, uh, uh, all the shot compositions. And after finishing this one, we don't know if the movie is going to look nice, but we know for sure if it's good or not. And then, of course, uh, the core starts. But uh, how to solve this time paradox problem? Well, uh, it kills us all the time. So there's only one solution. Uh, the solution is CGI Studio can help in creating assets. And it happens all the time. Maybe not, not with main characters, because uh, of course, this should be created in uh, Game Test Studio. But it happens all the time that we create some parts uh, of scenography and some characters that are used later in the game. Of course, we create them in our, our idea of quality, which is good for the movie, not for the game engines. And uh, another solution is to uh, take one guy from Game Day Studio. This guy is usually hated by everyone in, uh, in the studio, but we love him because the communication uh, between us should be very, 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 very straight. And it's hard to talk from the point of view of CGI Studio uh, with all the departments departments in the huge uh, game dev studios. Uh, it's the best idea is to talk with one guy. Uh, <clears throat> what's my survival kit? Uh, when everything is set, when when communication is on the right way, I am starting to writing uh, all the briefs. And 
because my background is artist. I was painting and drawing. I'm using uh, a lot of uh, visual communication. And uh, I start to create art Bibles for the entire movie, for every shot, uh, color palettes, uh, references, charts, uh, tons of stuff. <clears throat> because for me, uh, when the project starts, usually uh, it's not on fire. Uh, there is some time for preparations. Not all departments are uh, not all departments are required at the beginning. So it's a good time for me to prepare uh, briefs for everyone. And for example, this is how the brief looks for uh, just modeling of one of the characters from Frostpunk uh, trailer. Uh, I, I also draw uh, concept art, but for me, concept art is not enough. Uh, it should be always break down with uh, tons of reference images. And this is kind of visual language I'm using because uh, during the day uh, in uh, Platish, we communicate through a system called Shotgun. It's something like com complicated Facebook, when you can paste images, you can write and draw even on movies, you can paste 3D setups, 3D scenes. And uh, most of the movie is created by comments, like on the Facebook. Of course, we don't have likes and we don't have uh, sharing, but uh, basically it's looking uh, very similar to, to Facebook. And that's why I... I uh, I like to make this visual language communication to look aesthetically nice. Uh, this is, for example, the most complicated image I, I painted for, for during work on Frostpunk, uh, because all the time uh, when the movie is forged, uh, we are doing something called overpaints. Uh, this one actually is created almost from scratch. Uh, and during these overpaints, we try to change gray models or uh, very, very simple geometry. Uh, and add some light uh, create in form of brief for uh, artists who are going to model it and uh, light it just after uh, concept art ends. But mainly uh, I'm doing uh, very simple stuff. Uh, for example, this is a staff for uh, Calder um, High of Mage from uh, Warhammer Total War. So everyday stuff looks like this. Just overpaints, overpaints, some arrows and uh, commenting other people's work. Uh, these are mood bursts I, I created for scenography for the forest uh, when dark, dark elves meet with high elves. And these are some uh, overpaints for a light concept. And once again, uh, production art. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it's not the stuff you would like to show in your portfolio, uh, but when you're making lots of projects, the visual language is most necessary. Uh, at the end of the day, I had a chance to design character, the only one character which wasn't designed by uh, Games Workshop. And for me, I like 20 years old fan of uh, Games Workshop stuff. It was an honor. <clears throat> but when it becomes crazy, well, uh, this is the triangle I was talking at the beginning. But let's put it into a galaxy of Platish image, because Platish uh, usually works on many projects. Uh, we are not doing only uh, game cinematics, we are also doing uh, commercials. We are doing even openings for uh, football matches, uh, strange stuff. And sometimes it happens that I'm working on uh, uh, simultaneously on many projects. And every project ha has its own lead because the work of the lead is so complicated that uh, he cannot run a few projects simultaneously. But director, he can do it. Uh, most of these movies are like minutes, two minutes uh, long. Uh, it's a bit more difficult than uh, directing a typical movie with actors because we have three different clients usually, and three different systems of communication. So <clears throat> you can imagine that uh, this is the, how the everyday is looking. It, it's burning. Uh, so there's uh, some short ideas how to fight with this one. Uh, doing less is more. Uh, I'm trying not to do uh, micromanagement. I have like huge experience with working uh, in advertising and when I was a beginner and I was drawing stuff, I, I uh, was in contact with many bad, bad, really bad art directors. And they were doing micromanagement all the time, sitting behind your back and just pointing uh, some stuff on your monitor. And it, this was crazy. So that's why I, I decided to trust, uh, to put some trust into my artists and try not to kill the good stuff. Uh, because the project is, it has some kind of flexibility and you can always use the stuff, which is, for example, nice animation, which is not very which doesn't suit the screenplay very well, but it's uh, so good and uh, it costed so much work that uh, we, you need to use it. 
uh, and believe me, the director, uh, he can be very, he can very quickly become a burden for the entire team, for the entire project. Uh, and director should be a solution, should be a helper, should be a, a leader, not a burden. And th this happens actually all the time. Uh, but let's go, let's talk uh, about this art, because I told at the beginning that my background is, in art, is being an artist. And I have to give, give, uh, give up with this one to, uh, in order to uh, direct cinematics, but uh, <clears throat> it wasn't very nice for me. I, I, I still was missing something. That's why I decided to uh, run my own startup company. Uh, and uh, my company, Platish Mash, I'm working on was kind enough to give me one day off every week. Uh, I can work in my company uh, for free. And uh, I work there also every evening, and we are making a game called My Memory of Us, and I encourage you guys to, to see it on public, play it, vote for it. We still need half of the year. So this was pretty fast. Do you have some questions? Other questions? No, no. I don't see any, so thank, thank you, you very much.